Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Alex Proskurin and this is the second lecture out of our lecture series called Financial Machine Learning, which is called Labeling. So today we are going to speak about such topics as filtering, fixed time horizon labels, triple barrier labeling, meta labeling, trans canyon labeling, tail sets labels, which are actively used in factory investing, matrix flags labels, which are used to detect equity breakouts and return versus benchmark labeling. But first of all, before going to labeling, let's speak about filtering and why it is so important. So let's state several sentences from Advances in Financial Machine Learning book written by Professor Marcus Lopez de Prado. Portfolio managers typically place a bet after some event takes place, such as a structural break, an extracted signal or microstructural phenomena. These events could be associated with the release of some macroeconomic statistics, a spike in volatility, a significant departure in a spread away from its equilibrium level. We can characterize an event as significant and let the machine learning algorithm learn whether there is an accurate prediction function under those circumstances. So why filtering is so important? Many uh, analysts tell us about efficient market hypothesis theory, which basically states that there is no way to predict the market better than the average player, um, meaning that we cannot beat the market in the long term. Some of the analysts and papers say that on a long term level, markets are very close to um, random, uh, random process, which cannot be predicted. But still, several algorithmic traders achieve remarkable results uh, during even 20 year uh, trading period. So how it is possible? That's why filtering takes action. So instead of trying to predict market on each bar, we try to predict market in some vulnerable state or a predictable state. So filtering does it for us. So, in, so we try to predict the price prediction or price action not on every session uh, open or close, but we rather to try to understand what kind of events can happen, which can then which can dramatically change the dynamics of markets, and that's why filtering is so important. Secondly, filtering makes our our data more IID, which is independent and identically distributed, and this is extremely important for various statistical uh, algorithms and procedures because they do require IID data. If you try to predict market uh, on uh, each bar, your data is not IID. But if you filter that, in this case, your data will be much closer to IID. So what types of filters are actually present and uh, can be used? So some of them are event-based, for example, financial report publication or some report uh, publication, macroeconomic event or financial statement release. So here, when we try to filter out events, uh, for example, let's take financial statement release. When we try to filter out events when uh, a company releases its fundamental report, we definitely know that one of the most informative features will be financial um, KPIs or various financial ratios which are present in this report or past reports because this is a fundamental uh, information which drives the price of a security. Sometimes this effect is called a post earnings drift. Second, what, uh, uh, what you can do is to use technical features. So for example, high values of uh, average directional index, ADX, or SMA crossover or volatility spike can make the prediction, the price prediction easier for us. Because in this case, market becomes uh, more vulnerable and uh, more predictable. We can also use very structural breaks filters, such as Z-score filter, QSM filter, or Supremum, Supremum Augmented Dickey Fuller test which is also called SADF. Market microstructural features can be also filtered in our case. So certain values of VP in spike in KL lambda or shortage of liquidity uh, sometimes mean that we can easily predict the market. And finally, some specific signals. Probably you already have your own proprietary model which uh, helps you to filter out events which you can predict using financial machine learning algorithm. 
So you can just take this model and try to build a uh, financial machine learning machine learning model on top of that. Let's take a look at several filters which are quite universal and can be used uh, on uh, multi-asset data sets. So the first filter is so-called QSUM filter. The QSUM filter is a quality control method which is designed to detect a shift in the mean value of measured quantity away from its target value. So let's say that S of t is a um, stochastic process which is uh, which basically re reflects the price of a security. So the filter is set up to identify a sequence of upside and downside divergences from any reset level zero. We sample a bar t if and only if module of S of t is higher than threshold, at which point S of t is, re is reset to zero. So here in QSUM filter, we, instead of um, using the S of t, we would rather use the returns values. So what QSUM filter does, it tracks separately the cumulative sum of positive returns and cumulative sum of negative returns. And if one of them deviates more than threshold value, in this case, filter event comes to a market. So you can use ML thin lab function to generate those filter events and to set up a threshold. How do you define a threshold? Um, actually, it really depends on what kind of events you would like to capture. So you need to play around with various thresholds uh, for QSUM filter. If you decrease the threshold value, this, the filter will sample um, events more frequently. If you increase the threshold, it will sample events less frequently. But uh, you can start from a um, rule of thumb to use three standard deviations uh, of, uh, your, of your securities returns. Because as we all know, there is a rule of three sigma for normally distributed random variables, meaning that all extreme events are uh, usually occur uh, when their price deviates by more than three sigma from its mean value. So try to use um, three sigma uh, at the starting point and they play around with that to understand what is the best setting for you. The next filter is so-called z-score filter. So this called fil filter is designed to detect sudden spikes in the time series. So the filter is triggered if S of T minus SMA S of T, SMA here means simple moving average with some, some window divided by STD of S of T. So here STD means si simple moving standard deviation is more than number of standard deviations where window, which is used for SMA and STD and number of standard deviations are filters parameters. So how do you define mean when window, STD window and z-score? Once more, you can start with z-score value to equal to three and mean win window and STD window equal to 100. You need to play around with that kind of setting and understand, do you manage to capture uh, real spikes in, uh, in a security, or do you generate too many false positive signals or um, your parameters are too strict and you, you, you do not manage to capture real spikes in a price security. So you also need to play around with this type of filter. And uh, as we have discussed, it is designed to detect sudden spikes in the time series. So now let's talk about labeling. And the first thought which, we, uh, which comes to our mind when we try to label time series is so-called fixed time labeling. So let's take a look at uh, this picture. So when we try to, to label event which starts at time t, we just take a look at, for example, two hours after uh, this event or one day after this event and measure the return of a security during that period of time. For example, if the return is positive, it, the label value is one. If the return is negative, it means loss or downtrend. The, the um, label value is minus one. If the return, uh, if the price did not change, the value is zero. So this is quite straightforward approach which is quite, which is quite widely used in many applications. However, let's discuss what are the disadvantages of this approach. So first of all, this approach does not take into the account security pass because during that time, the security can suffer from various spikes or drops in price 
which uh, um, is which are not taken into account in this type of labeling. As a result of that, the volatility of security is absolutely not included in this method. So, uh, and as a result, it does not include include our trading logic, because many practitioners actually use fixed profit and stop loss levels. They do not sit in a position until some fixed time um, passes uh, when we took a position. They try to set up the level when they take profit or the level when they exit the position and, and say, okay, the, our prediction gone wrong and we would like to close the position. Or sometimes the trader would sit in a position uh, if, for example, either fixed profit or stop loss level is hit, or we will close position in some fixed amount of time. So fixed time labeling does not take into the account the logic of uh, financial markets. It just, and it does not take into account the path under which security comes to, uh, comes to uh, fixed time point. So actually, triple barrier labeling solve these type of problems. And in the next part of this lecture, we'll, we'll discuss how triple barrier method works and how it tackles the pitfalls of fixed time horizon labeling.